Hello, I'm Benton Jones, Director of Art here at the Cape Cod Museum of Art, and we're here today for a virtual exhibition of the Falmouth Art Center members' uh, exhibition at the Cape Cod Museum of Art. Uh, we had over 180 uh, entries to this exhibition, and we selected uh, 45, so it was, uh, it was a rather selective uh, uh, group of artists that uh, we were able to accommodate and the show is incredible. I really am uh, so pleased at the, the level of work that, that, were, that was submitted and that is in this exhibition. So uh, I am just uh, also want to thank Laura uh, Reckford, the Executive Director of the Falmouth Arts Center, who collaborated with me uh, putting this exhibition together, and uh, I hope we can do some more collaborations in the future. So enjoy the exhibition, and here's Laura. Thank you, Benton. And I just want to say that throughout the Falmouth Art Center over these past couple months, there's been a buzz about this show. This has really been a great excitement throughout the Art Center. We're way down in Falmouth, but everyone knows about the Cape Cod Museum of Art and how prestigious it is to hang on the walls here. And I encourage everyone to come down and see the show, but for those who can't, you can enjoy this virtual exhibit. And I know all of us at the Falmouth Art Center are so proud to be here and part of the Cape Cod Museum of Art for this show. Right, right. I mean, it, the it's difficult to hang a, a show when you're trying to be as inclusive as you can uh, and have all different genres and all different uh, mediums and materials. Um, but then at the same time, if you, if you have little vignettes and can group them together, then I think uh, you, you can be successful. And so that's part of the method of my madness behind hanging this show is to give people little areas to to make relationships with absolutely yeah. and the mediums are so interesting here talking about the sculpture in particular right the ceramics that were submitted uh, we had probably 15 different cer ceramicists submit artwork and uh, you know being a museum founded by harry hall with uh, a deep tradition in, in pottery uh, here at the museum. It was, it was great to see that uh, level of participation from the Falmouth Art Center and the quality of the work that, that your artists are producing. You have a dedicated studio there for cer ceramics. We I do. I know, because I got a tour once. Yes, yeah. and the program is very popular. And at any given time, there's probably 70 students in the program. But as I said, the buzz among throughout the art center, but particularly in the clay department was, this is your chance to submit your pieces to a show that shows people throughout the Cape what we're doing in the clay department in Falmouth. So it was a real um, testament to the, the clay studio manager, Seth Rainville, and he, he got everyone to submit. And so a lot of these people, this was their first time submitting to a show. Well, you'd never know it because it's a really high, high quality. So, congratulations. Thank you. This is just amazing. This artist blows me away. Everything she does is completely different. Um, and to have it right under the Falmouth Art Center logo, <laughs> and it has this Cape Cod connection with the shells and the oysters. Um, so creative. She was a delight to work with, and you know this piece speaks uh, closely to me because I do oyster farming. I was just out <laughs> on the oyster farm today, and uh, I thought it was just so whimsical and fun to have have this figure welcoming you to the ex exhibition. So, thank you, Sally. <laughs> yes, that is very delightful from Sally Fine. Yeah. I would like to introduce Gary Urgonski. He will be your host today for this virtual reception. Gary has been the guild uh, president at the Cape Cod Museum of Art. He was our guild president from 2017 to 2019. He's also an artist member at the museum, and he won a Juror's, Juror's Choice Award for our exhibition, Light in a Dark Season. 
Gary? Pam Abrams Warnick. Pam says, Marcel Proust stated the real discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but rather in having new eyes. My art reflects explorations of my own history and life's transitions, some normal, some traumatic, and how this energy finds its way into an abstract work of art. I have always played with and explored many mediums, yet most recently, I am really enjoying creating with mixed media and collage. For example, I use an old painting as a substrate, or a ripped up piece of artwork, or photographs of my paintings as ephemera, synthesizing the old with the new, creating a new piece that has the history to actually support it. As a retired psychotherapist, I have always been attuned to the emotion within words, and as an artist, I'm drawn to this emotion and energy represented by the marks, shapes, and colors, rather than the actual representation. I must also mention that living on Cape Cod and its beauty directly informs my colors and the shapes. Corrine Adams provided this statement. The inspiration for my ceramic vessels is the ocean. I've always lived near the ocean and cannot imagine a life far from salt air and sand and wind. Being near the ocean is good for my soul. I respect the sea and find beauty in its unpredictable fierceness. This influences my work and I want to celebrate water, waves, and ocean through my hand-built vessels. I've chosen to work with clay because of its unique willingness to be manipulated and transformed by hand into three-dimensional works of art. It begins soft and malleable, then hardens into one of the most durable mediums in the world, maintaining its integrity sometimes for thousands of years. Susan Bauer. I have had three professions in my lifetime. I've written books on the history of oceanography, I've been a clinical psychologist, and I've spent the last 15 years swimming in Cape Cod ponds and drawing and photographing everything I see. All these endeavors look into intriguing but frightening dark places and ask, what lives down there? How Swimmers Dream is part of a 12 mixed media collage project that depicts fantasy swims that I have imagined in all seasons of the year. And future exhibits, each will be paired with a poem written by a local poet. Barry Beter. Barry provided the following statement. People often ask me how I discovered the beauty and magic of boat hull photography. I didn't discover it. Hullscapes discovered me. Its beauty was already there and is everywhere. I learned that peeling bottom paint and tidal debris share a palette made up of a season's work of natural and man-made chemicals. Included are forces such as the impact of tides, current, temperature, water stability, pH, and much more. I was drawn into the amazing and complicated intersection where natural and man-made forces combined at the waterline of boat hulls, producing amazing imagery, patterns, and colors. I do not use Photoshop or manipulate the image. Barry's boat hull photography has been exhibited at many places on the Cape, including the Falmouth Art Center, Kutuwit Center for the Arts, the Cultural Center of Cape Cod, Cape Cod Maritime Museum, Cape Cod Five Bank, and the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. I can only tell you that Hellscapes discovered me. I didn't discover them because I had no plan that day when I was walking my dog past a boat that was sitting on a trailer at basically an abandoned house in the fall. I saw that this boat had its beautiful design and I took a closer look and when I did I realized that it was barnacles and dirt and debris. The locals call it the scum line of a boat and it's the part of the boat that sits on the water and absorbs the chemicals and the compounds and the currents and the flow and it forms a pattern and a shape. And I noticed one day out of nowhere that this shape looks like beautiful art. So much that I took a picture with my iPhone thinking nobody would believe me. That became Hullscapes. So it, it captured me. The first one, the hullscape that jumped out at me, the actual design on the boat hull looked exactly like the river where the boat was moored. And I started to notice how often the, the hull lines looked like the environment.
It's the funniest thing, but pe I can't convince people that they're looking at the horizontal waterline of a boat hull. People think that they're looking at a painting. Very often we'll see very defined seascapes with waves and water and sunsets, and sometimes you'll see landscapes, beautiful forests and woods and mountain outcroppings. It still blows my mind every single time I see it. I can't. That's why I'm so excited about hellscapes because it's an adventure that keeps on going. The best part is I think I'm so tickled and grateful that that other people see enough in it and appreciate it enough that they're actually wanting to buy it. And the fact that people want to hang these things in their living room is just, I find just such a treat. I'm both humbled by it and grateful that people share my appreciation for what these hulls look like. I think it's wonderful, so that's about it. Catherine Seta. Catherine lives on Cape Cod where she is inspired by the coastal scenes and the landscape surrounding her. Vibrant colors that sparkle in the sunlight, earth tones and textures with subtle variations, designs carved out by reaching branches or ebbing tides. She is also attracted to wild and rugged northern lands. Her paintings express a creative order and are often idealized representations of the scenes inspiring them. Her hope is to create a sense of peace in the viewer. Her schooling and work life were focused on the sciences and education and include work in oceanographic research and at a K-12 independent school. She has exhibited in juried shows at the Falmouth Arts Center, Katuit Center for the Arts, and the Cape Cod Arts Center where she is a juried artist member. Her work has received several best awards and a few honorable mentions. And Kelsey Chenoweth, um, Kelsey says that um, she is currently in her fifth clay class at the Falmouth Art Center. She has always had an interest in ceramics, but never had the means to explore this interest apart from a couple of college classes. She is happy that she found such a warm and welcoming community in the Falmouth Art Center and, and is excited to say, we see where these experiences will take her in the future. This piece came together after a happy accident where part of the foot broke off. She used this to her advantage and created something different from the norm and ultimately a more cohesive piece than was originally planned. This is a work by Susan Ciampa called Sunspots. This is a work by Joan Cribben. Hi, I'm Joni Cribben, and I have been a ceramic student and member of the Falmouth Art Center for the past five years. My love of pottery started when I was a kid at camp using the kick wheel. As an adult, I dabbled a tiny bit in my 20s, and then for the past 10 years since I've been retired, I have been taking classes nonstop, and I even have a little studio in my cellar here. So this piece, I haven't named it, but it's, it's four inches tall and it's about nine and a half inches wide. I've used a dark iron rich clay, as you can see, and it's a cone six. As you might be able to see, I have modified the rim a little bit by banging it. The foot, I altered as well. And I left the outside uh, unglazed because I love the color of this clay and it contrasts so nicely with the beautiful blue rutile and other glaze that I have in the inside. Thank you. This is a beautiful piece by Margot Critchfield. Hi, my name is Margot Critchfield and I have been taking ceramics classes at Falmouth Art Center for three years now. Um, I took a number of classes during the 40 some odd years. I was still a working woman, very odd years, uh, first as a journalist and then as an Episcopal priest. 
And when I retired from parish ministry in 2017 so that I could do more social justice work and political activism, what I discovered was that there was a way to combine my passion for pottery and social justice work and storytelling. Um, and that is in doing narrative pottery and specifically social justice pottery. The piece that I have in the show is this piece and it's called I Can't Breathe. What it shows is uh, an amazing young man right here, Elijah McLean, uh, who was 23 years old when he was killed last August, August of 2019, um, after having been put in a chokehold by Aurora, uh, Colorado police officers, and then given a fatal overdose by the EMTs on the way to the hospital. Uh, Elijah was a pretty extraordinary young man, perhaps uh, on the spectrum, uh, although not diagnosed. He used to, he taught himself how to play violin, and he would take his violin and go to the local animal shelter to play for the cats and the dogs because he felt it really soothed them. Um, his final words were all recorded by the police officer's body cams, so some of those words are depicted here. And then this is part of the coroner's report. Among Elijah's final words were such things as, I can't breathe. I'm just different. I'm an introvert. I'm really sorry. I love you guys. You're all beautiful. I don't judge people. I'll do anything. Give up my identity. Anything. I'm so sorry. You're phenomenal. You're beautiful. Try to forgive me. So that was the kind of guy that Elijah McLean was. 23 years old with a remarkable story uh, to be told. And um, it is my privilege to try in my own humble way um, to tell stories like his and to amplify those stories because they need to be told. Um, Elijah McLean, just 23 years old. This is a beautiful piece of work by Annie Dean. Hi, I'm Annie Dean, and I want to thank the Cape Cod Museum of Art and the Falmouth Art Center and Director of Art Benton Jones for making this show possible and this opportunity available to regional artists. I have a work in the show. It's Blue Form with Rose Moon, and it's a recent work. It's a departure from what I had been doing over the last few years, which is um, essentially circles in connection magnetically with each other. And uh, I got a new studio, this space, this spring, and a uh, new thing started to happen in my work. My previous studio, I had a number of workstations. I worked with many materials, very mixed media, and I had a room full of ideas and thoughts and drawings pinned up all around me. It was like a brain splatter. And when I got this new space, everything started, my ideas started to hone in and had a lot more to do with inspirations from nature. The artists that inspire me the most are the early 20th century modern artists, Arthur Dove and Charles Birchfield, and the drawings of Paul Clay have always been a big influence. So I start the work on a big scale, and then when I reach a compositional problem, I stop and make a number of studies. So for, um, for Blue Form with Rose Moon, I made about 24 studies when I was halfway through the work, and then I was able to sort out where I wanted to go from there. This is my newest work, which um, still has the circles uh, working around it, but some nature forms in here, and I'm having a lot of difficulty with it, and may do what I typically do, which is to chop it up and make smaller pictures out of it. So again, thank you everyone, and the show is terrific. This is by Doris Epstein. Some lovely landscape moments here. And um, Doris Epstein, I should say, um, has been a member of the Falmouth Art Center, which used to be called the Falmouth Artist Guild, um, since probably 30 or so years, uh, former board member. 
She turned 96 this year. Oh, she really? is still painting every day. She, this is a recent work of hers, I believe. Wow. Um, she takes classes at the Art Center and we're all just inspired by her every day. Well, that's beautiful, it really is. Captures the fall. Yeah. Linda Farmer. Linda provided the following statement. Painting on Cape Cod is all about changing patterns of light and color. She says, I retired to Cape Cod five years ago, drawn by the vibrant art communities and have found the beauty here to be inspirational. Daily walks at a con conservational area near my home reveal the ever-changing shapes, color, and light in the water and sky. I paint in watercolor, oil, acrylic, and pastel, finding pastel the best suited to capture these patterns and the splashes of light and color. As I continue on my art journey, I am beginning to explore abstract and expressionism using mixed media and collage. I received a BS in environmental design from the University of Wisconsin and worked as a town planner for many years. I have been truly blessed to have the opportunity most years to study and paint in Mexico, chasing the light with many great artists in the U.S. and Latin America. Sally Fine was educated at Ohio University, earning a BFA in graphic design. She also earned an MFA in ceramics at Boston University, as well as a certificate of mastery in their program in artisanry. Sally has had four solo exhibitions in the Boston Sculptors Gallery with exhibition titles of Sea Change, Catch and Release, Constellations, and Coordinates. Additional solo exhibitions were held in West Newton, France, and the Dominican Republic. Group exhibitions included the Fuller Craft Museum, the Edward M. Kennedy Institute, the DeCordova Museum, and Boston's Federal Reserve Bank Gallery. Locally, she has participated in group exhibitions at Katua Center for the Arts, Heritage, Heritage Museum in Sandwich, and the Higgins Gallery at Cape Cod Community College. something other than just mermaid. Uh, she has a lot going on. She has shells from Florida and shells from Cape Cod. She has glass from Germany. <laughs> she has tire chains from elsewhere. She is to appear to have just been dredged up from the sea and she is victorious in her ascent. Thank you. This is another piece by Sally Fine. My name is Sally Fine and this is my piece, uh, The Oyster Goddess or uh, The Lady of Mignonette, which is a sauce that goes with oysters. She is clothed in oysters, she's gathering oysters and she's readying the sauce, the, uh, these implements here, her halo and her tool are both slicing devices. So it's a lighthearted piece. It does refer to some deities uh, or saints even. Uh, traveling in Italy made me think of, uh, you know, these figures that you see in churches and I've always been fascinated by them. This is made out of uh, clay, and this is wood, and these are real oyster shells. And that's it. Thank you. East dentist artist Eleanor Friedman is inspired by the beauty of the local landscape. Her work, Shades of Sisuit, interprets a familiar locale that she sees in all seasons on her daily walks. Ellie works primarily in pastel, as she is drawn to the vibrancy and immediacy of the medium. She uses soft pastel on sanded papers or textured boards with acrylic or watercolor underpaintings. Her works have appeared in numerous juried exhibitions in New York and New England. Ellie is a juried master artist at the Cape Cod Art Center, a juried member of the National Association of Women Artists, and an associate member of the Pastel Society of America. She serves as board member at the Pastel Painter Society of Cape Cod where she also coordinates a scholarship program for high school students aspiring to careers in the arts. Ellie proudly serves as a docent here at the Cape Cod Museum of Art. Hi, my name is Ellie Friedman, 
and I'm a pastel painter living in East Dennis. I'm proud to be exhibiting in this juried member's show of the Falmouth Art Center at the Cape Cod Museum of Art. I've taken many a workshop in Falmouth and it's benefited my practice greatly. I've learned many new techniques. The Cape Cod Museum of Art is also near and dear to me as I've volunteered as a docent for the past six years and have learned a great deal about art and artists and have hoped to share that with others. As for my own work, I'm typically a representational landscape painter, although I've dabbled in still lifes and portraits as well. I use sanded paper or a textured board and will often do a watercolor or acrylic underpainting before applying the soft pastel. I will sketch outdoors, but will mostly complete my work in the studio where I really have time to think about what a work needs. Needless to say, living on the Cape, there's inspiration all around me and I use it to create my works. My piece in this exhibit is entitled Shades of Sisuit and it's inspired by my daily walks by the Sisuit Neck Marsh which is so different from day to day, from tide to tide, from season to season. There's always something new to look at and take in and interpret in my work. Thank you. This is a piece of work by Alice Nicholson Gaelic. Victor Goyetsky. Victor was born in Kiev, USSR, the son of a famous painter. By age 10, Victor began his formal art training. He attended the School of Visual Arts for Gifted Young Artists in Kiev in the 1950s. In 1966, he received a Master of Fine Arts in Monumental Sculpture and Architectural Design from the Stoganov Academy of Industrial Art in Moscow. He designed and produced sculptures for city parks and historical sites in Russia and Ukraine. In the 1980s, he came to the United States where he was an antique art restorer for museums and collections, including the White House collection. He was a senior industrial designer and sculptor for Hasbro Industries. He has had numerous one-man shows in New York and New England. His current figurative work is of fired clay, resin, and bronze, and is very expressive of the human condition. These are more works by Viktor Goyetsky. Mary Lou Harwood. Mary Lou says that her art career started about 10 years ago when a colleague from the Barnstable Public School System began teaching a class in pastels at the Falmouth Art Center and asked me if I would like to sign up. I did, and thus began my joyful journey. Over time, I have found that I seek to celebrate and find beauty where I stand. Solitude was painted from a photograph I took walking back to my car after having lunch with a friend in Barnstable Village. It was a misty, overcast February day, and I was struck by the peacefulness of the marsh. Little did I know the prophetic nature of the title, Solitude. Arlene Hecht. Arlene Hecht is founder and director of Gallery 333 in North Falmouth, which opened in 1988. That same year, she opened her Newton, Massachusetts studio, where she teaches painting and sculpture. She received a BA from Boston University with additional studies in art history and has studied painting and sculpture since 1970. Music was an early influence and inspires most of her sculpture today. Rhythm, motion, and gesture are the necessary elements of her figurative works, 
which have won Best in Show and First Prizes from the Falmouth Artists Guild Annual Juried Shows and the Newton Art Association in Newton, Mass. Hecht is a past president of the Newton Art Association and a member of the New England Sculptors Association. This beautiful entry is by Christina Jacoby. Here's a work by Doreen Kelly. I am a native of Albany, New York, and upon my college graduation from the College of St. Rosé, I moved from a summer job on the Cape to a teaching position in Boston. Shortly thereafter, I became a Fal Falmouth regular, spending summers and even possible weekends on the Cape. I enjoyed painting and sketching since childhood, but work commitments gave little time to pursue my interest and never allowed me time for any kind of instruction. In the 70s, my summer schedule gave me time to paint the Falmouth beaches and marshes with a group from the Falmouth Artists Guild. When I retired in 2003, I was determined to carve out time to paint. My transition from oil to pastel happened when I took classes with Betsy Payne Cook at the Falmouth Arts Center. Her instruction and guidance set me on a path and her enthusiasm tempered me to try the beautiful and delicious pastels as a medium. I wasn't long before I was creating pastel landscapes and soon the oil paints and canvases were stored away for another day. I enjoyed plain air painting, especially the beaches and local Falmouth area venues, which bring joy and satisfaction. The bright side of the pandemic has been plein air painting, which affords me the opportunity to paint with friends while social distancing and losing myself in the beauty of Cape Cod landscape. Zoom classes allow me to grow and learn and be happy with my connection to other painters and the delight of painting. Andrew Kuzman. Kuzman's paintings capture time in a moment. His works are the fully fleshed stories of multiple changing images and impressions, a myriad of memories of a place, and the things that people who have graced it. Even in the paintings that do not formally include a human figure, the people are undeniably present, either just now departed or waiting impatiently in the wings. Andrew has won numerous awards and holds a signature membership in the American Watercolor Society, the National Watercolor Society, Allied Artists of America, Southwestern Watercolor Society, and the New England Watercolor Society, where he won the gold medal and served as president for four years. While a dentist, he was integral in founding the Westford Center for the Arts and an historic church. He envisioned and spearheaded the restoration of Plymouth's historic library to become the highly respected Plymouth Center for the Arts. His greatest reward is found in teaching art to others. Diana Lee. Diana says she enjoys two worlds of artistic expression. First, as a teacher, she finds it rewarding to guide students and help them develop artistically. Many of her students started out as beginning painters and have successfully gone on to become wonderful established painters. Secondly, she's a painter and expresses her art through portraiture, the landscape, and still life. She considers herself an expressionist and a colorist is influenced by the works of Picasso, Bernard, Matisse, Van Gogh, and the German Expressionists. She works in oils, acrylics, and pastels. From this diversity of mediums, she is able to select which would be the best for each subject she approaches. Her palette consists of bright, rich, vibrant colors. Color plays a very important role in her compositions, for it is the intensity of the paint and a palette of lights and darks on the canvas sur surface that she most enjoys. Corrine Lilly. Having sold her first painting when she was 18 years old on a Falmouth sidewalk, she is especially proud to be among the Falmouth Art Center exhibitors these many years later. Depicting human emotion through her figurative paintings is what she most enjoys and does best. Expressing shared human emotion to the viewer is her goal. The shores of Cape Cod are Corrine's first source of inspiration and continue to be an underlying influence to her painting today. Her artistic talents have been enriched by her studies at the Mass College of Art 
and the University of Georgia, where she earned a BA as well as a BS in education. Her formal education has taken her to France, where on a scholarship, scholarship she studied art surrounded by the beauty of Provence and earned an MFA. Corrine is a member of the New England Watercolor Society as well as a juried member of the Artisans Guild of Cape Cod, the Cape Weavers Network, the Cape Cod Museum of Art, Falmouth Art Center, Georgia Watercolor Society, and the Cape Cod Spinning Guild. Hello, I'm Corrine Lilly, watercolorist and fiber artist. Having sold my first painting on a Falmouth sidewalk when I was 18 years old, I'm especially proud to be included in this exhibit with the Falmouth Art Center. Depicting human emotion through my figurative work is what I enjoy most and do best. My painting in this exhibit, Black Lamb, expresses this shared emotion wonderfully, and it was a joy to paint. Thank you to everyone at Cape Cod Art Museum. Whether virtually or in person, I hope you enjoy the exhibit. As a colorist, Jane Lincoln explores the relationship between hues. Since no color is seen in isolation, the interaction fascinates her. Her minimalist landscape captures the vastness of Cape Cod's marshes. Lincoln holds an MFA in painting from Massachusetts College of Art and Design at the Fine Arts Work Center in Provincetown. She teaches and lectures on color theory, following the methods of Joseph Albers. She is featured in the book, Contemporary Cape Cod Artists on Abstraction by Deborah Foreman, 2015. Studio Visit Magazine 2016 and Art in America Guide. Jane says, my concentration on color combines observation, experimentation, and emotional expression. The precarious quality of an individual color as it reacts to neighboring colors has become the focus of my work. While a strong color configuration is clearly visible in my paintings, the surface will reveal itself gradually with changes of light and position. Each color relationship reads boldly from a distance, while upon closer inspection, more subtle color interaction becomes visible. Mickey Lovett. Mickey works in printmaking and marbling. With an MFA from Boston University, Mickey began working in weaving until a shoulder injury forced a reevaluation of how to express herself in her work. She turned to paper and a silk marbling for many years, which expanded into an interest in the wider world of printmaking. She now concentrates on monoprint and collagraph. Having recently acquired a press of her own, she was able to explore more deeply the techniques that can best express her artistic vision. Her main interest is in the relationship between chaos and calm, and how without one, the other cannot really exist. Chaos can inform and beautify calm, while calm makes chaos intelligible. Mickey's awards include, include Best Technique for a Relief Print at the 2020 Falmouth Art Center Juried Show, Mixed Media Award at the Artists Association of Nantucket, Boston Weavers Guild Award of Merit, and New England Weavers Seminar Award. First artist is Andrea Moore. Andrea Moore grew up in an artistic family. She drew the figure for three hours every Saturday morning during high school, so that by the time she started art school at Washington University in St. Louis, she was ready for other pursuits. There, she majored in sculpture. She found that printmaking went hand in hand with sculpture and has been doing both ever since. Teaching art to children feeds her own work. She has taught at the Creative Arts Workshop in New Haven, Connecticut, on the Elizabeth Islands at the Katamit Art Center, and in Belém, Brazil. Currently, she divides her time between her studio in Gloucestershire, UK, and her studio on Cape Cod. Her prints are concerned with spatial relationships, sculptural shapes and geometry, and her prints and her sculpture are informed by her interest in textiles and textile traditions. James Musto studied at the Rhode Island School of Design, the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, and the Cape Cod Conservatory of Music and Arts. As an artist, lecturer, and sculptor, he has held creative arts workshops, and he lectures on expressing oneself through the nonverbal language of art. Among his prizes are first prize in abstract and first prize in realism at the Plymouth Art Guild annual jury show, and portrait award from the New York National Art Foundation. Published work includes The Canvas is Yours, 
and sharing the precious gift of creativity in Stylist International Magazine. James works in all media and enjoys experimenting with found objects, working them into paintings, sculptures, three-dimensional work and collages. Creating new techniques in multimedia using unusual material is his passion. He also designs home interiors, landscapes, and space planning. Richard Pollack says, I have been blessed by studying drawing and painting under the tutelage of the late Oliver Balfe and Paul Scott. Both were students of Hans Hoffmann and were exacting and proficient mentors. Richard Pollack was born in Chelsea, Mass, and he attended New England School of Art in Boston and graduated Montserrat School of Art in 1981. Pollack developed a mastery of many artistic mediums and approaches to achieve an end result. The combination of technical skills, life experience, and the good fortune of learning under excellent teaching has emerged in the production of a growing body of work. His paintings have been on display in galleries on Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, Boston, and Chelsea. They are also included in many private collections. My name is Richard Pollack. I'm an abstract expressionist. I live on Cape Cod. And I'm showing my new fresco series that I have been working on for the last year, over, over a year, over a year and a half, almost two years now. And um, I call this series uh, Women's Studies in Fresco. The frescoes are done by uh, the way I do my frescoes. I apply Lime-based plaster, four coats usually, sometimes more, but at least in at least four, and then I apply acrylic colors on top. I studied at uh, Montserrat uh, College in uh, Art College in uh, Beverly, Massachusetts. I graduated in 1981, painting, and I was fortunate there to have studied under two. Two men who were students of Hans Hoffmann, Paul Scott and Oliver Balfe. <clears throat> yeah, you can see the, the lime plaster, the sheen on the from the lime plaster on the wall to the right of the girl. So look at the lime-based plaster without any paint on it. Just a pure plaster. There it is. A little sparkly. A mineral a lime and marble dust.
at a point I I began using the men in my um, fresco series and this one has a you see the guy in there with the trash barrel and a hydrant and the two women street scene It says fish and chili. Oh, wow. Woman. Study. Actually, a study for this. For this woman. And this painting. A little bit different pose. And a girl walking. Another study for another painting with that the uh, painting that's in the show at uh, current show at the uh, Cape Cod Museum. And uh, in, around this time, I these are chronological. So around this time, I I'm adding some men in my work. So I change it from uh, well, I didn't change it, but the study kind of is evolving from women's studies in fresco to studies in fresco. Walking down the street. Guy walking. Here's the texture of the fine base plaster with the colors on it. And Seth Rainville. Seth says that he is the head of the ceramics department for the Falmouth Art Center and he is so incredibly proud of the work represented by our students in this exhibition. I have been a professional working potter for over 20 years and in that time I have found success by offering two distinctly different lines of work. Inkware is my devotion to creating canvas in clay that is adorned with narrative imagery. Each piece is a one-of-a-kind creation telling stories of life, loss, and love. This work can be found in numerous publications, museum collections, and in private collections around the globe. With my love of cooking and fascination with functional ceramics, I have always made a second line of work that is dedicated to those sentiments. I have lived many lives within the creative economy. I have been an educator, gallery owner, museum curator, an arts administrator, and have served on multiple boards to further access education to the ceramics community. I am honored to be part of this exhibition. Maxine Raymond. Having long been inspired by space, color, and texture, as expressed in a 30-year career in interior design, I have now been fortunate to be able to channel my creative energy into fine art. Relocating to Cape Cod in 1999, I was inspired by the Cape's natural wonders and by the many opportunities to study art. Originally concentrating on pastel landscapes, I have extended my subject matter to still lifes, interiors, figures, and portraits, and my mediums to oil paint. 
Among my several art association memberships, I was honored to be designated a signature member of the Connecticut Pastel Society in 2018. Seeing makes me paint and painting makes me see. Hi, I'm Maxine Raymond and I'm what you might call a later in life artist as I just began painting about 10 years ago. Uh, after a 30 year career in interior design, I'm seeing shape, color, texture in all new ways. Uh, the beauty of the Cape and the many opportunities to study art here have been so inspirational. Uh, I began with pastel landscapes and have since been expanding into uh, still lives, figures, portraits, and working in oil as well. As a Falmouth Arts Center member, I'm very honored to be included in this show. I also hold memberships in several other pastel societies and art centers. And in 2018, I was honored with designation of signature membership in the Connecticut Pastel Society. Uh, the piece that I'm showing in this show is entitled On Golden Pond and is part of a series of water reflection paintings. It was pre previously juried into a show at the Sal Magundi Club in New York in 2018, where it received the Liz Haywood Sullivan Terry Ludwig Pastel Award, and in 2019 at the Catherine Laura Lard Wolf Art Club in New York, where I received the Gordon Co. Dick Memorial Award. I'm so pleased to be showing here at the Cape Cod Museum of Art, which I consider a real little gem. Seeing makes me paint, and painting makes me see. I hope you enjoy the show. The next artist that we have is Peggy Richard. She says, I hold a lifelong passion for art and the creative process that, together with my wonderful nature, has fueled my art making. After a career as an art educator, I relocated to Cape Cod in 2013. I'm a juried member of the Cape Cod Art Center, the Sandwich Arts Alliance, the Falmouth Art Center, the Katuit Center for the Arts, and the Creative Arts Center of Chatham. I have participated in many group exhibits and will have my second solo show at the Cultural Center of Cape Cod in June 21. Hi, I'm Peggy Richard. Welcome to my studio. My art is driven by my passion for nature and especially the cycles of nature and what I feel we can learn from them as we are all a part of it. I am trying to communicate my emotional response to a particular place through my art and hopefully it, it translates to a viewer. My procedure starts with a lot of photographs that I take while doing hikes off the beaten path almost daily. Um, I also do some plein air work outside with watercolor paint and sketching. I'm fortunate enough to have a real passion for drawing and I utilize um, a daily sketchbook practice that helps me to make my compositions a little bit more concrete. I also enjoy experimenting with different materials to make an effort to loosen up a little bit before the finished paintings are created here in the studio. Um, thanks for coming. Please enjoy a little look around. This is a piece by Philip Richardson.
Robert Scott says that he is a self-taught artist. He said, I started out painting mostly expressionist works. In 2009, I began sculpting wood. I am an elected artist member of the Mystic Museum of Art and the associ an associate member of the Connecticut Academy of Fine Arts. My sculptures are mostly figurative works, though my intent is not to express realism, but rather allude to a certain idea while letting the viewer discover the forms within. Each piece of wood contains its own story. Different grains, colors, placement of knots, and species all play a role throughout the process of creating a work. This piece, Soul Searching, is about the process of looking inward. Of all the pieces I have created over the years, this one was the most challenging to execute. This is a work by Diane Scotty. She says, my name is Diane Scotty and my maiden name is Val de Boncourt, which when translated from its French-Canadian origin means go with a good heart. My studio where I work, play, and teach is called Good Heart Studio, and I strive to keep a good heart in all that I am and all that I do. I let my heart decide on what art I want to create for myself and enjoy commission work in order to please my customers. I consider myself a multimedia artist and was self-taught until my 50s. I attended Mass College of Art and received my BFA with distinction in art education at that time. I have taught in private schools and independently for over 30 years. Being an art educator, I am continuously experimenting with new methods and mediums. Change, sentimentality, and creativity are words that exemplify myself and my work. I let my heart decide on subject medium and style depending on my mood. Over the years, I have had the privilege of taking classes with numerous wonderful artists and have the opportunity to belong to the Falmouth, Foxborough, and Norwood Art Associations. I am one of eight anchor artists at the NAA Art Gallery. This is a second beautiful piece by Diane S. Scotty. This is a piece by Marie Shanahan. Mary Schiff. Mary Schiff says her muse is reality. She was inspired by capturing a real image that represents something more than it appears. Conveying a message through painting contrasts and or harmonizes. She, re she reveals its essence by inventively weaving elements of realism and abstraction. Mary's love of oil, watercolor, acrylic, printmaking, collage, photography, ceramics, and jewelry has been shared for decades through teaching. Studying under George Nick, she fell in love with pushing paint at Massachusetts College of Art, where she majored in painting and art education with a minor in photography. She continued her education with a concentration in ceramics at Rhode Island School of Design, which demonstrates how her varied studies, abilities, and experiences have seasoned her art. As a full-time artist, now retired from 35 years of teaching, her new career was enhanced this year by being accepted into seven juried shows, including Falmouth Art Center, Zulo Gallery, Medfield, Hopkinton Center for the Arts, and recently the Cape Cod Museum of Art. Peggy Schumann lives and designs by the philosophy of Wabi Sabi, a Japanese worldview centered on the acceptance of transience and imperfection. Her design sensibility is imbued in everything that she does, from her self-expression of fashion to designing commercial spaces, a career that has spanned more than two decades for her. After working as a design director for the commercial firm for five years, Penny's passion for quality, uniqueness, and being able to present an exclusive and unique product to clients led her to establish PS Design in 1992. In addition, Penny has been an interior design instructor for LaSalle College in Newton, Mass., and Newbury College in Brookline. She is a professional member of the Retail Design Institute 
and has been published in VM and SD, which is Visual Merchandising and Store Design, Salon News, Chain Store Age, and Designing with Tile. In 2013, she found a new passion for clay, which continued her sense of design process. Mostly expressed in black and white, her work emphasizes form and function rather than color and enables her to see the beauty in the imperfections of clay. I'm Penny Schumann and welcome to my studio. I live and design by the philosophy of wabasabi, a Japanese worldview centered on the acceptance of the imperfection. My design sensibility is demonstrated in everything that I do, from my self-expression of fashion to designing commercial spaces, a career that's been in more than two decades. Shortly after retiring, I found a new passion in clay, which continued my sense of design process. Mostly expressed in black and white, my work emphasizes form and function rather than color, which enables me to see the beauty and the imperfections of the clay. Most of my work is hand-built, which gives me the freedom to create organic shapes whether I am creating a sculpture, a one-of-a-kind piece, or everyday tableware. This paper clay bowl has been not been fired. It is a perfect example of how I can manipulate the clay into an organic form. We have a saying among potters, not to fall in love with the piece that you are creating until the final firing is completed. Anything can happen for the piece not to survive. This very challenge of the material seems to make me push clay to perform beyond its expectations and therefore makes me discover more about it. Susan Siegel. Cape Cod is home of many world-class artists and galleries. I feel so fortunate to be a member of a community with such a rich appreciation of the arts. I have been able to greatly enhance my education studying with immensely talented instructors. I hold a Master Artist membership at the Cape Cod Art Center. My work has been juried into many shows at the Cape Cod Art Center, the Pastel Painter Society of Cape Cod, the Falmouth Art Center, as well as being juried into the International Pastel Society's web show in 2014. In the fall of 2011, I was honored to be invited to join the South Cape Artists, a diverse, a diverse group of talented and dedicated artists from Mashpee and the surrounding areas. Pastels were my first love painting medium. Four years ago, I was welcomed into Terry Dunn's oil painting class at the Falmouth Art Center. I was incredibly fortunate to have Terry's instruction and guidance in pursuing a new medium. I'm truly living my artistic dream, painting figures in oil. Each new figure captures a memory or a moment in time. Being able to capture these moments, especially with my grandchildren, brings me such joy. Claudia Smith Jacobs earned a BA in political science from Boston University and trained at Georgetown University for admission into the US Peace Corps in Brazil, where she spent two years. She completed her master's degree at Leslie University and received a certificate in Portuguese language and culture at the University of the Azores in Portugal. Claudia studied art in France and England and at multiple venues on the Cape and in Boston. Her numerous awards include the Falmouth Cultural Center Elaine Pear Cohen Award and the Romanos Risk Scholarship given by Pam. She currently teaches at the Falmouth, Falmouth Art Center. Claudia says, there is always a slight twist to my work. I am not interested in the facade, but rather in what lies behind and beneath. It's about inviting the viewer to see ordinary people and scenes in a new way, as if for the first time. My paintings are deliberately dark enigmatic, mysterious, and haunting. Marie St. Hilaire provided the following statement. I have been a practicing self-taught artist for approximately 18 years. I paint independent of academic theory and rely instinctively on the creative recesses of the subconscious spirit to reveal its nuance. Thus, an initial idea for a painting might, after undergoing a process, evolve into something entirely unexpected. Most of my themes are non-traditional, usually figurative, sometimes dark, often quirky, and seldom pretty. Mediums include acrylics, oils, 
collage compositions of wood, rust, or anything found on the ground that might seem like a good idea. In essence, I strive to project art as a life force, similarly with all its peculiarities and surprises. Even so, I'm still looking for that something that has never been done. Hi, my name is Marie St. Hilaire, and I painted this um, painting that you see beside me, Hans Holbein. He's a 16th century painter um, with a lot of character. And um, as I mentioned to the person I'm half speaking to at the moment, his, his eyes will follow you no matter where you go. So, a bit haunting, but uh, I've worked with it for several years and uh, no one ever haunted me. <laughs> anyway, so that's how I'm talking. Dick Tranfalio. Southboro photographer Dick Tranfalio's work has been featured in juried shows at the Cape Cod Art Center, the Worcester Windows Gallery Program, the Falmouth Art Center, the Fitchburg Art Museum, and the River's Edge Arts Alliance at Assabet Valley. His photography is included in Heart of the Commonwealth, a recent book about Worcester County and central Massachusetts. Dick has participated in advanced workshops at the New England School of Photography, Main Media Workshops, and the Worcester Art Museum. He is a member of the Gateway Camera Club, Assabet Valley Camera Club, the Cape Cod Art Center, Arts Worcester, the Falmouth Art Center, and Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Nancy Warren, working with clay, Nancy combines her interests in handmade forms and two-dimensional design. Infinite expressions of form are possible with clay, while it also gives the maker a surface for decoration and glaze. She started ceramics many years ago and then put it aside. When she returned to it several years ago, she said, it was as if I had been building my skills over 35 years without actually touching clay. A life's catalog of observations of form, line, harmony, composition, and color had accumulated in my mind. I'm grateful to all the teachers and especially Seth Rainville and the Falmouth Art Center for guiding me to learn and improve every day and providing a welcoming studio to work in. Thank you, Gary. What a wonderful tour. I also want to thank the 188 submissions, uh, artist submissions for this exhibition. It was really difficult to make the selection. And I want to thank Laura Reckford, uh, the executive director at the Falmouth Art Center, who helped with this collaboration quite a bit. Uh, I want to thank Frank Ostrander, who is behind the camera right now, and without his audio-visual engineering skills, we wouldn't uh, be able to communicate with you today. And uh, again, thank you, Gary, for being our host today. Uh, one other person is Jane Fleming, who did a lot of the background uh, work. Uh, she communicated with the, the artists and, and helped uh, take in the submissions on delivery day. So thank you, Jane. It's a team effort here at the Cape Cod Museum of Art, and we hope to see you uh, on your travels on the Cape. I'd also like to thank my wife, Carolyn Dutch, for extensive editing and collating and, and working with me to, to try to put these together in a, in a format that, that uh, is smooth and makes a lot of sense. So thank you so much for, ben, for this, Benton. This was really great and it was fun. <laughs>